Welcome to Fairway Media's coverage of the 2021 Falling Barn Open Round 1 Back 9 brought to you by Grips Disc Golf and you. Hit us up at the email down below if you'd like to be a part of our next video. Once again, you see the beautiful barn here in Cedro Woolley. Tournament put on by Cole. Awesome guy. Always look forward to these events. Thank you again to the Skagit Valley Disc Golf Club for bringing us this round out at the NSRA Disc Golf Course in Cedro Woolley. Commentary brought to you by myself, Corey, and Broston. Go ahead and tell us who we're seeing on the screen. All right. Uh, number First off, we got Kenny Clark. He's last year's winner of this tournament. Uh, we got Josh Fitz, who... Uh, I said last video I haven't seen him, but so far he's not doing too bad. And then we got uh, yourself, Corey Jones, sponsored by Prodigy Disc. And to wrap it up, we got Jeremy Marsh, who's sponsored by PackX. Let's get into the action. Hole 10, one of the honestly more daunting key shots on the course. You see that uh, hole, the drone decided to take the left side fairway. There is left or right of that. You have to navigate 324 feet to that basket, which has an absolute cliff of a drop-off just behind it on the left. Oh my. Glamour shots by Kenny Clark. Let's see how Jeremy Marsh starts us off here on the back nine, hole 10. Yeah, this is probably one of the most intimidating tee shots, just because of how small the gap is. Oh, I agree 100%. Do you, do you prefer the left gap or the right gap? How do you play it? I throw the right gap, so I did two different things for the tournament just because I wasn't so sure. So I did I took the right gap both times, but uh, first round I threw a backhand, and second round I threw a sidearm just to get through the gap. Fair enough. And Kenny, Kenny with the forehand roller. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he went down the hill. And hit something that sounded like a gunshot, like that thing yeah. was going Mach 41 as it went down the hill. <laughs> but what a confidence play from Kenny. I mean, anybody that's seen him plays knows that his control of a forehand is phenomenal and 100% uh, giving it the gusto on that forehand roller. Ooh, this is looking nice. If it's far enough, that'll be good. Oh. Oh. Scrubbed a little bit up on the left, but this is quite the shot. He played the whole fairway, and that's yeah. what you need to do. And if you see where it slowed down... Ooh. Yeah. What? He's gonna like that result. What? What did it even? Was that like a root or like a rock? It was or like something? it was like a rock or a root. I don't remember exactly okay. which, yeah. but yeah, he hit something quite solid. Wow, that's awesome. Because if that, that he would have been down the hill. Hundred percent, like that. Not as far, not as far as Kenny, but still. It's still, and the hill drops so hard that if you crest it, like you're going down. There's just no way around it. Oh yeah, that's the that's what you see out here. The pattern is, all the greens have some sort of trick to them. Which is what I really like. Absolutely. It makes you pretty much think about all of your shots. Mm -hmm. I was really tucked around that corner, so I tried to do a little bit of a skip and just kind of got some dead dead air there. I was throwing an A2, which is a really overstable approach disc from Prodigy. See Jeremy doing the smart thing and just getting it up there for a three. This is another one that you're not really going to see hardly any birdies on. It did average above par for the round at a 3.24. There was only 7% birdie. So, definitely not something birdied much. The fact that uh, Kenny was able to get out of there, pretty pretty good. I mean, he gave he gave that the run of all runs, though. You're not going to see another player do that. That's 100% mm -hmm. Kenny Clark right there. All right, what you think of when you're staring down that putt? Oh. I'm thinking hit metal, and I'm glad like I'm glad I did. I honestly, when I miss, that tends to be my miss is high or low. I have a pretty direct putt. I don't really angle it from left to right much. That's I, you good. Know, my putt's pretty straightforward. Um, so I had the confidence that I was going to at least draw metal. I just I kept it low, which is you know kind of natural when you're looking at a hill like that. Mm -hmm. Your body wants you to to aim low, not high. So all things considered, that's uh, not the worst. So here we are, hole eleven. Chakabra, 343 feet. This one is really tucked into that grove of trees you see on the right. Uh, you're seeing the drone fly the open route, which is probably the most played. That being said, there are a lot of players that will throw a backhand at that grove of trees and hope that it gets through. You do have the OB on the right, which is just on the other side of Holt 10's fairway. We kind of play back and forth on each other here. So 
We got Josh okay. ripping the uh, forehand, and that oh, thing no. just never came back. I mean, it went a country mile, as you can see here. Wow. Some people say it's still flying to this day. Uh, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, he did find himself OB quite a bit wide left of the hole. But uh, there was no lack of power there. And you see Jeremy going with that backhand, backhand route. Uh, it, it, to me, it looks so scary from the tee pad, but so yeah. many people get through there. I don't it, understand uh, how they do because it's just it's such a it's such a poke and hope gap. Th that is exactly how I describe it. But I see so many players Ooh, wow. get through, and that yeah, like look at that shot. So oh, you can't. One. That was really good, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen to Kenny. You can't knock the result. <laughs> Uh, but if you're a player of Kenny's caliber, there's literally no need. This man could hyzer a forehand 200 feet past this basket if he needed to. That's ridiculous. That's so, so far, this, especially like, with a spike hyzer like that. Yeah, he and to go deep. Pure hyzer, like 375 right there. Yeah. And you'll see the difference because uh, I have no hyzer to get my disc that far at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kenny's Kenny's forehand is just something to be seen. Yeah, you. Yeah, it looks like you release with a. Uh, well, that obviously was Anheuser. low, but yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I tend to throw the Anheuser for sure because yep. I don't have the power like Kenny. No, I don't. Not not many people do. That's because most of us are human. Yeah. But Josh uh, had a pretty good recovery shot there. He's going to give himself a chance to convert and try to minimize the damage there. You can see I am. You know, I'm a ways behind, but I, it's pretty open. I did not capitalize on that. But from where I was at, if you're having a decent round, you shouldn't really have too much trouble. From here, I'm definitely just going to be trying to lay up and yeah. get it out of there with, you know, minimal damage. And here's that where Kenny landed tricky. with that massive sidearm. Yeah, that is, that's really good. It was on a 45 degree hyzer the entire way. And that's a great putt too. You know, if uh, if Kenny has. The chance to look at the basket, you, you're gonna have a pretty high percentage chance he's hitting that putt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from just just about anywhere. Same with Jeremy. And Jeremy honestly. too. Yeah, that's. You got to see birdies from both ways. I'm yeah, Jeremy was super close to putting it in too. Oh. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty incredible to see how close it was in the footage because that's one that you know you don't really have that much of a view of the basket mm -mm. from the tee pad um especially that backhand route like you just if you don't hear trees you're happy and that was about as good as you're gonna see on that one so a couple of birdies from the card moving on to hole 12 there's another art basket here at the end which is pretty neat we're looking at a par yeah. three 356 feet you do have ob left um pretty much just some natural hazard on the right you don't want to mess with um, pretty straightforward, though. Yeah, you'll see people either go with a uh, sidearm. Well, that's a pretty cool little shot right there. But you'll see people go with a sidearm um, over, like, all that long grass on the left. Or a uh, backhand, a little backhand hyzer. Kind of, like, hugging those uh, tall trees on the right. Yeah, it's one that uh, it has enough distance that most players aren't going directly straight at it. And you can see he's just barely to the right of it. Jeremy's giving it a really good move here. Um, but you oh, have yeah. to be wary of getting past that left uh, path there. That is OB. Other than that, it's it's pretty straightforward. You can kind of pick pick your route. If you, if you prefer the sidearm, it's there. If you prefer the backhand, it's there. If you have distance and an overhand, it's there. So I really like the design of this hole personally. Oh, not getting around the tree. Let's check it from this angle. You see Preston, Preston Boyd back there. That guy takes very good pictures. Yeah, he's an amazing loves, photographer. Love seeing his, love seeing his work. An amazing dude. Yeah, always. I'm always happy when I get to see him on the course. Mm -hmm. One, one of the better people I've got to uh, meet. Giving the whale sack a little go there. I Shout love James. I love James's stance. It's the best. <laughs> oh, turning it over. Flipping on you. Yeah, I tend to throw stable to understable discs backhand. I don't throw a lot of overstable. I prefer a hyzer flip, and I just definitely juice that one a little hard so it carried to the right on me. Josh, just a real smooth, good spin on it. 
He has really good form. It was yeah, he like, does. He has a nice, a, clean it's a pleasure pole. to play with him. Going Both forehand deep, and though. backhand. Yeah, I mean, and it didn't look like he put that much effort on it, and that's what I mean. His form is just so clean, and he has such a spin. This looks like a pretty cool putt, I guess. Like it's a cool, it's a cool shot. Well, and that's one of the few times I'm putting with a different disc. That's a P Model S. It's one of the new Ace Line discs from Prodigy. Um, it just has a lot more glide than a PA3. Otherwise, it feels pretty similar. Okay. So I'll use those sometimes if I don't have clean room for a jump putt, or I just want a little bit more glide out of a out of a standstill putt. Ooh. He's online like all day. Just that one a little low. Got Kenny just straddling a bit to the side of the tree, but he's really not that far at all. Yeah, that's always the worst when you're just like inches from making it in every single time. And that was inches from going out. That was really good putt from Kenny. The spin putt master, just getting that banger to grab and stick. But yeah, always a pleasure, man. Getting to play with Kenny is also a treat. Like I would I would happily tank another round if I had a chance to go play with him tomorrow. See, I'd do that three more times if I got to play with Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Some days it's just not your day, you know? Totally. But I was happy to be out there, and it was it was a good time. Uh, all these guys are great. I I have a good friendship with Kenny and Jeremy, and it was my first time getting to meet Josh, but it was an absolute pleasure of a card, and it was really good to get to spend time with the Fairway Boys. So Yes, especially on a course like this, too, because this course is just so beautiful. Attaboy. Great putt by Jeremy, but it's just a, such a beautiful piece of property, and there's, like, nothing around here that's really like it. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to it every year. Now, this is my first year playing this this tournament and this course, and uh, really looking forward to playing it in the in the future. Absolutely. Jeremy and Kenny getting those birdies. They're keeping it pretty close with each other, just one stroke apart right now. Um, Josh still under par for the round. Awesome. I'm just hanging out, having a good old time, vibing with the boys. Moving on to hole 13, par 3. This one I like a lot. It's uh, the only tee pad that's James Conrad approved. And you only have to go 356 feet. But it's such a cool over the hill to this like under the tree ceiling. You have OB right behind the basket. So kind of like you said earlier, it brings back that theme of having a green that's got some trouble to it. Yeah. Um, but at 356 feet, it should be reachable by just about everybody. Yeah, I'll see. Just you'll see. You see, uh, people mainly throwing fairway drivers and maybe the occasional uh, mid range. That was a great shot from Jeremy. He kept it nice and low, and it was able to just kind of skip, ride the ground a few times. Yeah, I don't remember if it was first round or second round, but um, so next hole, my drive landed about. You'll probably see it. Kenny might be in that area. Yeah, right about there. Actually, it was probably it was right there, and I was still able to scramble for the three somehow. I threw one of my best, the best shots of the tournament. Well, and I, for people that haven't seen the next hole, like yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, obviously. you'll see it because it is one of the longer shots on the course. That's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's gonna be in a good place. Mm-hmm. A little scary putt, but. Not too bad. Yeah, like like Corey said, there's OB right behind the basket. It's gonna be that uh, OB's gonna be that path. It's gonna be pathing over. And there are like a few logs that kind of keep. Uh, if you have like a low sliding shot, there's a chance to keep it from going too far. But I went a little wide on that one and caught some of the cabbage on the outside. So I'm just gonna be kind of pitching up from here, using the P model S again that I was just talking about. Just like, yeah, putting it up there. Oh, wow. That was really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's got, got some glide. Oh, a little snake. I couldn't it's tell. Were you, was that underneath your disc? No, it was right next to me. It was right next to okay. my bag. Yeah. From that angle, I couldn't tell if you were like, if you tripped or if you were like running to the basket because you thought it was going to be in. It was the first step was a it was a big step. I'm a big boy, but then I I thought I had a chance. Honestly, for my angle, yeah. I thought I was getting to walk one in. So. It looked it looked really good. Yeah, I was pretty happy with the result. Like I was able to, you know, it, it landed right at the bottom. No harm, no foul. Easy par. Kenny looking to hit this one here. Oh yeah, that's a good putt. No, he does. Yeah, he just has such control. 
one of the better putters you're going to get to see. Nice little replay. Oh, that's cool. That's a good. Right that's a good shot. Josh, I can do the same. Oh no! But that, we log. Hit that log we were talking okay. about, and that's yep. one of the few few things that can keep you in bounds in that in that area. From the knee, Jeremy. I think. This is for his birdie, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. To keep pace with Kenny right now. Oh. Just a little low, but that uh, that tree, from that angle, it didn't look like it was in his way as much as it was. But you okay. know, obviously for him to have to take a knee, it's putting him out into a little bit more of an angle than you would probably want. Yeah, but, might uh, that, yep, there you go. That tree does definitely, it's a lot shorter than it looks like. Yeah, and from where he was at, it caused him to have to, like I said, not only take a knee, but step a bit to an angle that he probably wasn't 100% comfortable with. All, All right. right. Only one birdie from Kenny. Which is, you know, uh, not unheard of, but you would, you would think you'd see a little bit more out of that. Mm -hmm. Moving on to hole 14, 466 feet, definitely one of the longer par threes, and one of the more daunting key shots. Uh, you can also see that it, creates a bit of a party zone up there. This is usually where you're going to run into a card or two just uh, because of speed of play. Not only do you have to navigate this initial tee shot, but anything that fades off to the right at pretty much any point during the fairway has a chance to go down a very large canyon. So, Yeah, see. this whole this whole play the hardest. Um, 0.79 over par. Yeah, which is pretty average i would say that for for most players this plays closer to a par four uh and it's not necessarily because of the distance but just because of what can happen if you don't 100 percent get off the tee clean and you can see jeremy dealing with some of that early trouble that you were talking about previously josh just real smooth yeah that's you looking really that's, good that's making a real good move anything in the short grass out there is great Mm -hmm, you can see definitely. it's pretty. It's a pretty scary putt if you're too wide, but you want you want to be in the short stuff. Ooh, that was looking really close to that tree. That's a really good shot too. Thank you. That was yeah. Good. It was it was a little tight off the tee pad, but again, throwing that hyzer flip, I know that I kind of have to direct the line on a different Whoa. angle. So but uh, that D4 you're good, you're likes, to, likes to push up pretty flat once it flips. Uh -oh. um, yeah, Jeremy, unfortunately, got quite a bit down there. Um, it was... It, it's hard to find almost anything down there. And once you're down there, it takes it takes a miracle to get back up for a lot of oh, yeah. players. So it's, that's it's, partially why you're seeing the backups. Um, mm -hmm. Because like I said, it, it, it plays closer to a par 4 just because of the natural hazard. You can see it probably took three different nature cams just to find Jeremy in there. We had to yeah, if you look really closely, right. yeah, if you look really closely, you can see him. And oh, yeah, that's really all good. All the way to the top, which is yeah, about, to, about unheard of from that position. <laughs> and you, with that P Model P -model S again? P Model S, yeah. Yeah. It puts a very similar line to my PA3s. It just has more glide, so I don't have to put quite as much effort on it. And I, I wanted to give that a safe run, but not really have to flex it too hard at that downhill. So, But I've been working those into my bag since uh, last season, and they definitely have found a place to stay. Ooh, okay. Very fortunate from Josh. Yeah. As soon as it stood up, I was a little scared there. I think we all were. <laughs> I, w I was there, I know it happened, and I was still scared, so it's okay. <laughs> Kenny giving it a safe run, and this Ooh. is why you have to be scared about it. Uh-oh. Okay, I mean, it's not too bad. But you can see how much... Uh, they just want to get up and run on this hole for just about everybody. And it's, again, it brings back that theme that we talked about of just having greens that have some form of... 
a hazard involved, and uh, it really, really does bring a special element to this course. I think that was going to be the first bogey that we see from a uh, Kenny so far. Which yeah, is... just you know, it highlights again how you said that this is, in fact, the uh, hardest hole for the day. It, it did include no birdies. It was one of only two holes that was not birdied at all. Yeah. Which I think this is a good hole, though, because it's it's not easy, for sure. That's definitely definitely not easy, but it's not, like, super hard either, I guess. No, I like, agree with you. I think that it, it just it punishes mistakes, but it yes. rewards good play, and I think it just punishes mistakes more than most any other hole on the course. All right, hole 15, 323 feet. Um, you're going to see it goes over, like, a little goalie. You're going to see people throw hyzer over the uh, the way that the drone went, or a uh, sidearm, which I feel like we're definitely going to see Kenny throw. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a fun hole. It's very picturesque. I, I enjoy stepping up to this tee pad. Um, you see Josh getting it out there a little long. Yep. And I don't I don't know if there is any OB on this hole. I don't think um, there is. None that I'm aware of. Just a lot of natural hazard. Yep. There's just a lot of sticker bushes and such. And yeah, after watching Josh's go a little long, I took a little too much off, so I scrubbed the front end trying to land on the uh, front end of that hill there. Did you stay up on stay up on the hill, or did you go down? Um, I was slightly down the hill. It landed okay. and hit just a little bit down, but it wasn't too bad. It's kind of hard to see in the in the footage how much it actually does slope down and then back up. But um, yeah, there is there is a little bit of a, a hill there. Ooh. Jeremy getting one over there real nice. Heck yeah, that's a great shot. You can't even, like, when I walked up to the hole for the first time, I couldn't even tell, like, that there was a little spot down there that was flat. It looked like it was just a huge drop-off. Right. Yeah, there's the sidearm line. Ooh, great run. Yeah, he great hits shot. really close to the basket and just, you know, carries a little long. And there's a, a view of the beautiful scenery out here, one of the things that makes this course so special. Mm-hmm, Definitely. Especially those big hills right behind. Yeah, right there. Those big hills, yeah. those are huge. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the entire uh, the club and everybody that puts this together and gets the course ready for the tournament, this place just always looks pristine for tournament time. So don't miss it. Good run Once from again, down there. I'm online again, just you know, missing, missing low. That was kind of my theme for the day. Just couldn't quite get the pop that I needed, but... You know, once again, I was just, I was stoked to, to find out I got to come out and hang out with the Fairway Boys, and anytime I get to play with Kenny is just a great time. I learn something from him every time. And he just, he bring he brings a vibe to a card that you can't really get anywhere else. Definitely. Oh. Little low. Little low, but on point, like you would yep. expect him to be. Jeremy for his two. There we go. Cashes that one in. That's going to get him tied up to Kenny for the moment. Josh cleans that up. Kenny goes more tap tap in. Yeah. Move us along to the next hole, which is uh, one of my favorite on the course for sure. It's definitely, yeah, it's... Really pretty, just like all the other courses, or other holes out here. And here it is, and look how beautiful it is on a nice sunny day. Hole 16, par 4, 636 feet. You're going to see the drone carry forward and then take him near 90 again to the right. And you basically just need to get it out there. You can go for a nice risk reward. You can cut the corner and get a little bit closer. Uh, as far as distance, though, it's not too much to handle, and there's not really too much danger once you're off the tee. You can see the OB on either side that uh, is all the, like, sticker bushes and everything on either side of the, the painted line there. But pretty much anything in the short grass is going to be safe. Yep. And then you just have to mitigate your distance up to the hole. Jeremy got one out there into the center. We got Josh stepping up. It, I don't know if Jeremy is going for the... Uh... It looked like he might have turned it over a little too much, or if he was going for like a roller and didn't turn I, over enough. 
I believe it was just a little too turned over. I don't think he was going roller. Um, that having shot, having played with him a few times, I don't think that that would be what he did. But Josh put just one out smashed there. one. That is super far. And I decided to try to get risky, and risks don't always pay off. But I went to cut that corner, and uh, thankfully somehow. Spoiler alert, stayed in bounds. But it was a real risk play that if you can just get through that gap, that you are cutting off a lot of distance. And Kenny, Kenny just... holy moly. Yep, this is this is that forehand we're talking about. That yeah, man has something that most people don't. And this is, this is a whole setup for it, for sure. So you can see I'm barely in bounds. And uh, even with me being a primarily standstill thrower, that was not the world's best footing. But I was able to get it up into the fairway and have a chance to move forward so that's good so far no harm no foul you got jeremy lining up and you can see anything in the open is pretty much at this point you just have to know your distance you have to have that 300 yep. ish foot shot dialed in oh, yeah and, oh uh, no he he got a little aggressive on that one definitely gave it a little bit more than i think he wanted to and he got punished oh, for it he yeah. is in the out of bounds area to the far right. Right before this shot, Kenny was like, Can I use your rangefinder real quick? I said, Sure. And then he goes, Oh, it's about that far, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. It is. <laughs> That's so, <cool>. uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes it helps. We yeah, actually gave that, uh, I gave that rangefinder away during a charity stream. So oh, nice. that's that's in a new home now, but I, I just remember thinking that was pretty funny. He was like, "How far? Oh, that far!" And yeah. well, there you go, my man's got it dialed in. So here's Jeremy looking to convert on his mistake, taking him out of bounds. You can see the OB line there. It's a relatively straightforward shot from where he's at. He just had to take it a ways back from the distance that he did create because yeah. it crossed a yep. ways back. Good up, up and down. And you're going, what are you throwing here? Uh, that blue one is actually also a P Model S. That's just okay. in, that's in a uh, color glow plastic. Okay. So does it I make let, it a little bit more overstable? A little bit more overstable, yeah. It feels, it just feels a little bit better in the hand for more distance you as well. It? But, uh, wow. yeah, I did not for, the, for the most part, <laughs> it's just a little bit more stable. Okay. That's a county don't go over there. <laughs> You're like, good yeah. luck with that. <laughs> we are just laughing about where the disc was, OB. He was like, that's a Kenny don't go over there, OB. Oh. Just a little low, but, you know, again, I'm hitting the target, so at the end of the day, I wasn't too upset about it. It's just, it was one of those days, you know? Yeah. We got Josh lining up. He <laughs> hit the good side of the nub. Thank goodness. I did not want him to follow my footsteps. It wasn't nearly as fun as it looks. Good birdie for Josh. Moving us to 17 after these tap-ins, which is uh, one of the one of the more treacherous holes for sure. Yeah, I know. He told me. You know, I was here. I know. Yeah. Taps it in. He's back on back on course to shoot the round he wanted to shoot. Hole 17. This is another one of the longer par threes. Uh, pretty pretty dangerous. All the long stuff on the left for the most part is OB. There is an OB line. It's a little bit further down that hill. There's a Mando on the right to keep you from throwing over the path. And once you get down into the green, it is by far the hardest one on the course. Definitely. Yeah, this is probably my favorite hole. We got a like a night night vision goggle. This is what it looks like when Predator plays golf. <laughs> Going dark. So this is a hole that you'll see a lot of forehands. You see a lot yep. of backhand rollers as well. I think that's actually a really good play. Yeah, because the ceiling is pretty low. It's a low Once ceiling. Get... And yeah, oh, the, again, no. there's just all of the that trees be... on this fairway are on It'd the be green. going OB. Yeah, there is OB down that hill. Right. I don't... Do you know... Right off if the top, I, if he if stayed I remember, in or not. If I remember correctly, he stayed in bounds because the okay. line is quite a ways down there. It is down there, yes. But it, that's that's like the first problem you're going to see the most of is people getting into that stuff on the left. And then secondary is once you do get up onto the green, it slopes very hard away from the basket. And as you just saw from that little shot, 
nearly every tree that's on this hole is on the green. So Yes, and there is OB when it slopes down, too, at the bottom of the hill, which makes it even tougher. Jeremy lining up the roller, which, like I said, you'll I, I see a lot of backhand rollers on this hole, and uh, it put him in a decent position, about as good as yep. the position you can have to be on the green. I was... I was... Um, Lucky enough to get uh, oh, yeah. two birdies on this hole. Got it both rounds. <laughs> which is the only person. If, if I was able to link that up, I would yeah. up. But that's, that's phenomenal. Just another beautiful shot of the Pacific Northwest. So it yeah, might... looks like he's in bounds here. Yeah, me, my dad, and I think Jesse Bickley. Yep, me, my dad, and Jesse Bickley were the three to do it. To That'd get be it. the trio. That'd be the trio. Yeah. To get it both rounds. Which is really... Which is definitely a bonus birdie. Because first oh, round... Absolutely. First round, this played a .32 over par. Which, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I would have expected it to be higher. But yeah. there were a decent amount of birdies... But definitely, you know, with nearly 30% of the field bogeying this hole, it's uh, it plays rough. And you can see cameraman extraordinaire in the background. He doesn't have to try too hard to hide. I'm sure he's standing up full. <laughs> the, the hill slopes yeah. very quickly. So Jeremy, even giving that run, was uh, pretty heroic. Oh, Man. just a what little a high. What a bid. Yeah, he's all over the basket. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to get to play with Josh. Oh, it's just low, too. Man, once you once you get that dialed in about getting it up high, you're going to be dangerous. Yeah, it'll it'll be nice when I get, uh, get a chance to practice as much as I used to. I've been focusing on a lot of other things in life, which, you know, sometimes you got to do. But Totally. Um, I, honestly, I was pretty happy to perform even the way I did after not really getting to play much over the last couple of years. So, but uh, you, that's that's something that's always kind of held me in when I could compete. So, we'll get we'll get back to it. Sweet. Well, a couple pars, a couple bogeys. That's going to be pretty average for that hole. Um, stepping up to what has to be the most iconic hole here at the NSRA course and the Falling Barn. Hole 18, par 3, 460 feet, throwing massively downhill, back down towards the parking lot, down towards Tournament Central, towards one of the final art baskets. Um, it's just such a beautiful hole. What an awesome shot. We don't have a lot of uh, raised tee pads and like as far as an uphill to downhill shot like that here. Yeah, and, uh, I'm pretty sure previous previously used to be playing from in the barn. That happened prior to me being able to play the event. I, okay. uh, I had heard about that and I had been up in that barn. But yeah, now we definitely do not. There used to also be some like uh, temporary down? holes that we're playing around the area as well. So. Oh, cool. But yeah, this is definitely one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic hole here at the NSRA course. Um, Kenny lining up the forehand, which is no surprise to anybody that's seen him play or seen the coverage of today's event. Uh, what, do you, what do you throw here? Me? Yeah, what, how do you attack? Um, first round, I threw a... I think I threw a destroyer. I went too, too deep. And uh, it was either my destroyer or a uh, savant. And okay. then second round, I threw a leopard, and I put it pretty close. You throw the uh, backhand, though, yeah. Sorry about that. Jeremy's stepping up. <laughs> Looks like um, he's got one flexed over pretty well. Oh, yeah. It's kind of cooked. Ooh, it's got to get out of there. Cause that's ob. Oh, one of yeah, one of the only spots that's OB near the basket, and he did unfortunately find himself in it. We got Josh stepping up now, ready to put a beautiful spin on the disc. Such clean form. Oh, it's got to come back though. He definitely got that one turned. It's trying its best. Oh, 
Looks like it's fallen his Jeremy yep. sign too, and it unfortunately goes OB. Kind of uncanny that two of them landed in there. It's not a very large area. Mm -mm, not at all. Yeah, it really stinks over there too. <laughs> <laughs> that it does. Ooh, you look like you're following that line too. Yeah, you know, it looks like a good idea, and I was pretty fortunate. So okay, I, you on I the back side of have, it? I was on the back Let's side see. of it, stayed in. Wow. Just barely. A nice close-up of the uh, art in the park. Bird poop on 18. What would you throw up the tee? Uh, right there, that was a D4. That's one of the D4s that I throw okay. quite a bit. And here I got my P Model S out again, just kind of trying to give it a decent bid. I was fortunate to be in bounds when we were all that close to not being in bounds. Maybe. And it was, you know, fairly safe, easy, tap it in and get off the course. Go home and stream. Yeah. So Jeremy lining up here. Good effort. Gonna leave him a pretty easy tap in. I think that was the furthest out of all you. That one had a bit <laughs> of a roll to it after it missed, but not, not too, too bad. bad. Mm -mm. And Kenny for the lone two on the card. Get it. Oh, wow. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Snuck no it chance. right in. Yeah, Kenny was one of few birdies on that hole. Yeah, oh, averaging this hole. 0. 0.11 over yeah. par. Yeah, 3.11. Oh, nice Good save. save with Josh by Josh. Good save to finish the round. Jeremy tapping in. At least you got some up. <laughs> Tap in a little par, Dude, finish par. the round. Yeah, Kenny with a very good round. You know, that's how he found his way to the top of the leaderboards previous years, and he continues to do that at a lot of events that he plays. So, definitely another good day out there with Kenny. Thank you to everybody tuning in, watching the Fairway media coverage. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring a ding, ding that bell. Brosson, what do you have to say to these folks? Listen to what Corey said. Yep, that's easy. Yeah, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Round two coming up soon. Make sure to check round two. See you then.